Okay, so to continue, we need to grab a few more polys here. We need to create this kind of side hip tendon that's gonna help us use and fill up this volume so that we can actually get a bit more work on the side of the thigh done. We need to bring these way up actually. It's gonna help us to create this volume here on the side that ends up running down along the whole side of the thigh into this kind of patch where a bunch of tendons really do come together and create the structure on the side of the hip. So we're gonna take these two now and we're gonna shift drag them down. And then they need to actually come back in just a little bit. This one's gonna come forward, probably up a little there. So again, I'm looking to try to create that structure that's existing on the side of the thigh that follows the arc of the hip structure around and allows me to start to connect all these pieces together. So from the side here, we can see that we're dealing with this kind of piece right here that flows down into this bulge on the side of the thigh. That bulge is pretty much the end of the hip bone as it sits back in our structure. So we're gonna bring that a bit farther back on the side, and then this one on top here, we need to bring down a bit more. So the way that arc works on the side of the body here, we need to kind of fill in that gap and let this run around and follow the hip structure up. So now from there, we can look at figuring out how this kind of bridges together back here on the side. And really, we're just gonna take these two edges here and we're gonna bridge them back to these two edges here. So we're gonna use just a single segment. And again, that's gonna allow us to have a nice kind of smooth transition back in there. Then these three edges on the bottom, switch that back to our left view, those are gonna end up coming down and around that bulge that's sitting right here. So we're just gonna shift drag those down. I'm gonna narrow them from the side a bit. And we're gonna open up this vertex structure a little bit more so we can kind of use it to get around this bulge. So then we're gonna bring this one back and over. And then again, with those same edges selected, we're gonna shape drag them down. We're gonna move them out so we can start to form that bulge right there. And it's a little hard to see from this side. We'll shift drag that down again. Narrow it. So I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit. And then we're gonna bring it back into the mesh. So we've formed that bulge right back there. Now, that's as far down as I'm gonna take it right now because we need to start thinking about how we're gonna actually create the connections here to hopefully, and we will, end up with all quads. So again, some of the muscle masses on the side toward the front here are gonna to need to be refined a bit more because here we're starting to have a lot more detail than we do here. So again, that's a pretty simple fix, but we need to start thinking about it and planning for it. So the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna look at this edge right here and what that should actually bridge to. So logically, it seems like it should bridge pretty much right across here. And that is about the correct direction for the flow of the muscle and tendon. But if we do that with just a single edge, we're not gonna actually have enough up in here to work with. So we're gonna increase that by a single segment. So two segments across, and now what that's gonna allow me to do is actually take this edge and this edge, and if I bridge those two, we'll see here I'll end up with a triangle, but here I'll end up with a really strange looking quad. So let's not try those. Let's take this one and this one. And if I bridge there, what happens? Well, we end up with closing this edge and we'll end up with an odd shape here. So let's just do that to begin with. So if we bridge with a single segment, 
Now I end up with basically an odd, odd quad right over here. So let's grab these two and we're just going to bridge. Actually, let's undo and we're going to bridge with two seconds. Now, as I look at this, I see here that I can target weld one vertex down to another. So let's just try that. So I've got quads here, but now I don't have quads here. So minimally, what I can do is I can just take this edge and run it all the way back. But do we want to do that? Or do we want to take and try to turn this in another direction? Well, really the easiest thing to do, and probably the best thing to do, is to take these edges, and we're just going to do a flow connect, creating a vertex right on this front edge for me that I can just connect right to here. So when I connect those two vertices, or cut between them, what it does is allow me to now have all quads in this whole region. So again, from there, what I like to do is go to my relax tool and just kind of relax this area and soften up that transition. And I can see by doing that, that these two vertices didn't actually get joined together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go and find my target weld and we're gonna target weld one to the other. So again, that allows me to go back to my relax tool and soften that area. So now as I soften that area, and I don't see any of those vertices pull apart, I really know that I have everything joined up nicely. And structurally, everything is really where it should be. So now I also like to see here on the back that that vertex is not coming back as far in the back of the body as it really should. So we're going to find soft selection, and we're going to use soft selection in that area. We're going to bring that down just a little bit. And I'm going to turn on edge distance. By using edge distance, it won't allow it to walk across two non-conjoined faces. So we'll just up that a bit, and we'll take this, and we'll just move it back. So now by doing this, I can end up kind of sculpting a region of the mesh without dealing with every vertex, because generally speaking, I don't want to have to touch every vertex on the mesh. I would much rather work with things like soft selection to work with a region indirectly, rather than directly accessing every vertice on there. So now on the side of the body here, we actually have a really nice flow and a really nice mesh. I think we have a bit too steep of a crease underneath the edge of the butt here, but let's look at our show under result, and we'll see that, yeah, we do have a bit too much going on there. So we're gonna go down to the relax tool, and again, we're just gonna kind of relax that region and let that soften up a bit. So now as I relax over there, even with showing result turned on, I have a much better idea of what's happening. So then I can go back to vertex, and with soft selection, we can again just kind of work on a region to make sure that we're dealing with a smaller area. Let's grab that from the side here so we have a little bit more control. So as you can see, it makes it a lot easier to work with our mesh when we're not trying to do every single vertex by hand. So things like soft selection and relax can be incredibly helpful to kind of soften up how that mesh is flowing.